week we do spiritual practices as part of the service something that you may be able to use in your daily practice and if you've noticed we've actually had several spiritual practices that we've shared with you today there was the beginning sutra there was <clears throat> the meditation on breathing there was the story about sitting with anger and now we're going to practice another one it's a simple one it's just four words I am here now. And I'm going to invite each of you to say these four words. And as you do this, touch each of your fingers with your thumb. I am here now. You can say this out loud or you can say it in your own mind if you feel like it. Again, I am here now. And as you say each word, I invite you to rest your body, quiet your mind and focus on your hand and keep saying these four words, touching your finger to your thumb, even as I keep talking over you. I am here now. Keep repeating this, repeat this 10 times. This is a practice of being present. By saying the words and thinking of what it means to be here. To think of I, who am I? Am your very presence and existence here now. Put aside what happened yesterday or this morning Put aside what will happen later today or in the coming week. Just be here and feel yourself in your body. Feel the tip of each finger as it touches your thumb. Have no other thing except this, your finger touching your thumb. Join me three more times. I am here now. I am here now. I am here now. Perhaps 
that's a practice that can help you in the coming week. I am the Reverend Nancy Reed McKee. I use she, her pronouns. You and I are living in a time of great complexity. It's a time when the, ordin the extraordinary seems ordinary almost. We live in work in a, at a relentless pace, trying to do more in less time. We spend hours online talking with people and yet feel isolated and lonely. We have a level of materialism and comfort that was unimaginable even a hundred years ago. And there are millions of us who can't keep up, who become depressed, anxious, confused, and they prescribe drugs to keep, uh, help us keep pace with this world. It's extraordinary. We're also living in an age where the ordinary seems extraordinary. It is extraordinary to take the time to get up early in the morning and watch the sunrise. It's extraordinary to sit, to listen to a piece of music and sip a cup of hot tea on your sofa. It's extraordinary to eat dinner with all our family together at one time. Such simple things, but they, we rarely take time for them anymore. And when we do, they feel extraordinarily special. We are very busy, each of us. Each of us fills our days with tasks and projects and work. And the question to ponder is, toward what end? What is it exactly that we are doing? Are we fulfilled? Do we have a sense of purpose? Rumi, the 13th century mystic poet, wrote these words. It is this it is as if a king had sent you to a country to carry out but one specific task. You go to the country and you perform a hundred other tasks, but if you have not performed the task you were sent for, it is as if you have done nothing at all. So people have come into the world for particular tasks and that is our purpose. If we don't perform it, we have done nothing the end of the quote. What is the particular task you have been called for? I don't have the answer to that exactly, but I do believe in the value of the question. Perhaps you're like me with an underlying nagging fear that I am doing busy and important work all the time, but not the real work, not the work that I really feel I've been called to do. We are interested each of us in reaching a deeper and richer life. You may sense that you can realize more of your potential as a human being, and but wonder, how do I do that? How do we even begin the task of really living, putting aside the distractions of all the busyness? We can do this through transformative practices. And when I say this, I know that some of you assume that I'm going to be talking about meditation practice. And meditation, in as various forms as it is practiced, has been shown through numerous studies to be one of the most effective ways to achieve deep personal transformation. Not only can it generate a calmer, kinder, and less reactive response in our lives, but it has actually been shown to remodel our very brains. But meditation alone is not enough. If we are to develop holistically, we need to adopt practices that help us develop our mind, our body, our heart, and our spirit. All of these things together. And know and embrace the fact that this doesn't come easily or fast. Living well, living into our real potential is acquired through practice, 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 practice. Maggie Lyon, a holistic life consultant, writes these words. The practice part means just that. You do it daily, over and over, and not in a gross way, but rather in a this is what makes me who I am way, without the aim of ever stopping with it. You practice as contribution to your ever unfolding life on this earth. 
it can feel beautiful and compelling, harrowing and agonizing, annoying, vexing, boring as hell, or as ordinary and routine as brushing your teeth. Above all, practice is your rock, the ultimate placating pillar, steady and reliable as they come. End quote. We begin everything as a practice. I remember teaching an adult friend of mine the practice of brushing his teeth, something he had not incorporated as a child. That's how we learn. We begin by practicing until it becomes part of who we are and what we do. And we know we may never become proficient, never master the practice. I have been practicing throwing ceramic pots on a wheel for over 30 years and I find it liberating to know I have so much to learn and so much more practice is required. An integrated practice is one that recognizes our whole selves and remind us, uh, reminds us to attend to all aspects of what makes us whole. We must be mindful of what we are, that we are not just a body on this planet, not just an intellect absorbing knowledge, not just a spiritual person disengaged from the realities of the world, and not just an emotional sponge responding to the heartbreak and the passion of the world. We are all that and more besides. To live into our fullness, we need balance in our lives. To practice parts of our being that are not exercised much. To integrate our whole selves, mind, body, heart, and spirit. What might this mean for you? Let's look at practices. Here's a list of mind practices. You can probably think of others that aren't on this list. Reading and study, discussion and debate, writing and journaling, pursuing a degree or certificate, continuing education classes, learning a new subject or foreign language, book groups, study groups. Here are some effective body practices, strength training, weight, tra weight lifting, yoga, Pilates, cardio training, balanced diet and conscious eating, Tai Chi, Qigong, sports, dance, hiking or running. Practices of the heart include those that develop self-understanding, enhance compassion, and improve our relationship with others and with the world. Here are some examples. Psychotherapy, dream work, journaling, art, dance, and music therapy, volunteer work, heartfelt service, 12-step programs, philanthropy, couples work. And here are some spirit practices, meditation, mindful yoga, sacred song and chanting, sacred dance, mantra practices, worship in congregational life, ritual, spiritual direction, spiritual retreats and guided and self-directed, gratitude practices. You may already be doing some of these practices, but is there an area that you're missing? Part of the work of integration is to attend to your whole self. If you have focused on a few particular areas, choose a practice in an area that's missing and begin. Begin to practice. Start with a modest goal, something you might know you can actually achieve. You don't begin to run a marathon. You don't begin to run with a marathon. You begin with a 10 minute jog. You may not be able to meditate daily for half an hour, but you may be able to med meditate for 10 minutes three times a week. And know this, know this in your heart. Your practice isn't graded. No one is paying attention to this but you, and you do not have to evaluate it. The efficacy of the practice is in doing it. It's not how you feel after you have done it. It's not based on achieving something. It's just that you have practiced. And if I were to guess, I would guess that many of us already have regular mind and body practices. A number of us likely have heart practices. 
many of us find it harder to incorporate spirit practices into our lives. Although we may wonder if we could see ourselves transformed or feel more integrated if this had be, was to become a regular part of our lives. One of the most frequent questions I am asked is what I mean when I talk about being spiritual. When I try to answer, I find it a lot like when I try to describe God. I know what God isn't. It's not a person, not a being that can be described or comprehended with human language. Spirit is similarly, similarly non-verbal and better understood as an experience, close to what happens when I view art or hear an incredible piece of music, experience human compassion, or become absorbed in the Milky Way glowing in the night sky. It is knowing that there is more to life than what meets the eye, some deeper reality that I periodically glimpse on the edge of my daily life. In her book, An Altar to the World, Barbara Taylor Brown writes this, what is saving my life right now is the conviction that there is no spiritual treasure to be found apart from the bodily experience of human life on earth. My life depends on engaging the most ordinary physical activities with the most exquisite attention I can give them. My life depends on ignoring all touted distinctions between the secular and the sacred, the physical and the spiritual, the body and the soul. What is saving my life is becoming more fully human, trusting that there is no way to God apart from real life and the real world. This year in sermons and on our Wellspring Wednesday times, we will be exploring our spirit more. Not only can we have more integral, transformed lives by attending to our full selves, our body, mind, heart, and spirit. But as we attend to each of these areas, they can become part of our spirit practices. Bringing intentionality, regularity, and depth to a practice shapes it into an everyday spiritual practice. It changes you. I want to close with this poem from Adrian Rich. Either you will go through this door or you will not go through. If you go through, there is always the risk of remembering your name. Things look at you doubly and you must look back and let them happen. If you do not go through, it is possible to live worthily, to maintain your attitudes, to hold your position to die bravely, but much will blind you. Much will evade you at what cost, who knows? The door itself makes no promises. It is only a door. Blessed be, amen.